standard form here of an ellipse is x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared equals 1. So it always equals 1. These terms are always added. And the a squared and the b squared can be switched. Okay, And we're going to talk about okay the distance from the center to the vertices. Okay, That's the a distance. The distance from the center to the covertices. Okay, that's where it's narrower. This is the minor axis. This is the major axis. The major axis is the longer axis. So the distance to the major vertices, or the, just the vertices, that distance is A from the center. From the center to the minor vertices, or covertices, along this minor or narrower axis, that distance is B. And then the distance from the center to the foci, okay, these two focal points, that distance is C. Okay, so basically what an ellipse is, it's like this. It's like if you have a string and you hold down the two ends of the string like this. Okay, so there's your string and you put your pencil right in there and you pull that string. Okay, it doesn't stretch, but the string will gradually get a little bit longer here, but a little bit shorter here, and then so on. It's going to get a little bit longer here, shorter there. If you take this piece right here that kind of overlapped and you cut it and you put it over here, the length of that string will be the length of the major axis. That's called the focal distance, okay, or the focal length, and that's going to be 2a, okay, which is the length of the major axis. Okay, so the a, okay, if it's underneath the y, meaning the larger quantity is underneath the y, what that tells you is going to be more elongated, okay, or stretched in the y direction, the, the ellipse. If the number underneath the x is larger between the two of these, it's going to be more elongated in the x-axis direction, like the horizontal direction. Okay, now just like we work with parabolas with shifting them, you can shift these ellipses as well using this h and k. So h and k is the center of the ellipse. So if there's not an h and k like here, it's going to be at the origin. Okay, so let's get into some problems and I'll, I'll tell you a little bit more about it as we, we do it. So this first example, we have x squared over 25 plus y squared over 9 equals 1. Okay, so if we go to graph this, we can see that 25 equals a squared. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, in the x direction, I'm going to go right 5 and left 5. I'm just taking the square root of 25. Okay, so we get 5 and we get negative 5. Okay, so those are our vertices. And then if we take the square root of 9, we get 3 and negative 3. And it's easy to remember because it's underneath the y, so it's going to go in the y direction, the vertical direction, up 3, down 3. So at this point, we have a pretty good graph. You just draw an oval or an ellipse, okay, through those points. But the only thing we're missing is how to find the focal points, the foci. And the way you do that is use this formula here. It's c squared equals a squared minus b squared. Okay, so in this problem here, it's going to be c squared equals a squared. That's the larger of these two denominators. It's 25 minus 9, which equals 16. And if we take the square root, we get plus or minus 4. So the foci are always going to be along the longer axis, the major axis. If it was longer in the vertical direction, we'd be going up and down. So I'm just going to go right 4 and left 4. Those are the two foci right there. So if we were to tie our string, we would hold it down there, and that's what would trace out the ellipse. Okay, let's do another example. This one, you can see the center is where? It's at positive 2, negative 3, right? Okay, so if we graph this one, let's locate the center, right 2, up three, okay, like that. And I think I'm gonna have to give myself a little bit more room for this one, so I'm just gonna write, draw it a little bit lower. Okay, so let's go down here. So we've got right two, uh, plus three is down three. Okay, so there's your center right there. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go two in the x direction. So the square root of four is two, so I'm gonna go two to the right of the center point. So right two and left two, okay. And I'm going to go in the y direction, the square root of 36. So up 6 and down 6. So that's 4, 5, 6. Okay, right there. And then down 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So right about there. Okay, oops, I went a little bit too far right there. Okay, so if you graph this. Okay. Okay, your ellipse is going to look something like that. Okay, so this is the major axis. This is the minor axis. This is the center point. The only thing we have left to do is to find the foci. And we're going to use the same formula, c squared equals a squared minus b squared. Remember, a squared is the larger of these two denominators. So we have c squared equals 36 minus 4, which is 32. And if we take the square root, we get plus or minus 
Uh, square root of 32 is 4 root 2, because 16 times 2 is 32. But what we want to do is we want to go from the center point, which is 2, negative 3, but we're adding 4 root 2 and subtracting 4 root 2 from the y coordinate since we're going in a vertical direction. So this is going to be plus or minus 4 root 2. Those are the coordinates of the foci. Okay. All right, so that's a little bit about graphing. Now, how about working backwards where they give you some information and you have to come up with your own equation? Well, I still recommend drawing a sketch. That'll really help you to get all the pieces together, the A, B, and C. So let's go ahead and graph this. Okay, so the vertices they're telling us are at 2, 3, and at 2, negative 3. Okay, so you're with me so far? So those are the vertices, and we're going to need a little bit more information here. Okay, I just made this problem up off the cuff here, but let's just say that the foci, okay, are at uh, 2, 2, and at 2, negative 2. Okay, so they're going to be right here and right here, okay? So we can see that our ellipse is going to look something like this. And we don't know how wide it is yet, but we're going to figure that out uh, using this formula here, c squared equals a squared minus b squared. So the distance from the center, okay, which is halfway in between the vertices, so you can use the midpoint formula or you can just count. So this is um, six units, halfway in between would be three units from either vertice. Or you can find the midpoint of the foci halfway in between those two focal points. So we can see the center is at 2, 0. So this is going to be x minus 2 squared plus y minus 0 squared equals 1. Now we just have to find the denominators. Okay, it's longer in the y direction. How do I know? Because the vertices are along the major axis, the longer axis, and the distance from the center to the vertex is 3, so 3 squared is 9, right, because this is a squared, these terms are squared. And now we just have to find b squared. Well, we know c equals 2, that's the distance from the center to the foci. And we know a is 3, so if we put that into our formula, we get, okay, we get uh, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, if you solve, you can see that b squared is going to be 5. So this is 5b 